A very good evening to you all, and a warm welcome to this masterclass with the Califax Reed Quintet, presented by the Yong Suto Conservatory of Music. We welcome also our virtual audience joining us via live stream on YouTube. Today's session is the latest installment of YST's masterclass series, which the conservatory has run for its students and for the wider music community over the past 17 years. Through these masterclasses, our students are given the invaluable opportunity to learn from some of the world's finest musicians. In recent years, these visiting artists have included Nobuko Imai, Gautier Capuçon, Andras Schiff, and Masaki Suzuki. The conservatory is glad to be able to continue its tradition of presenting its masterclass series, which continues to evolve in response to the COVID pandemic. Today, we are greatly privileged to have with us Califax Reed Quintet. For more than three decades, Califax has been acclaimed in the Netherlands and abroad for their virtuosic playing, brilliant arrangements, and innovative stage presentation. And they are the inventors of a completely new genre, the reed quintet. 
Today, Califax will be working with students on a program of chamber music. But before we begin, please be advised that while photos and videos are permitted during this masterclass, the flash must be turned off. We begin with the Poulenc Trio for piano, oboe, and bassoon, performed by Jonah, Nesta, and Stephen. They will be playing the first two movements, the Presto and the Andante.
Well, thank you. I guess the microphone is on. Yes. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. I'm very glad to hear this piece again. Welcome to you all. My name is Alban Wesley. I'm the bassoon player of, uh, of Califax. So I know this instrument very well. I know the piece very well, too. I was fortunate to uh, grow up with a brother who plays the oboe and a father who plays the piano. <laughs> so this piece has been played many, many times at my home when I was, uh, well, in, in many stages of my life, actually. I just, uh, we did it as a teenager already, and I just remembered, uh, or Raf reminded me that at, r 10 years ago, my father turned 75, and he thought, once, one time more, I want to play this piece. So he practiced a long time, and we played it for one more time. So it's uh, fantastic for me to hear this piece again on this high level. We are very uh, proud to be here uh, as guest uh, ensemble in this wonderful uh, school, music school, and uh, yeah, you have, proven my uh, experience of the past two days that uh, the level of playing is very high here and we are very glad to be able to uh, to try to contribute a little bit to further development of what we're doing here. What we all love to do is playing chamber music and um, well this, ac this is an excellent piece to, to showcase the different instruments. There's one thing I want to tell the audience about the piece. It's very interesting how the composer uh, uh, describes the piece. It's a trio, and normally you would expect it's a trio for oboe, bassoon, and piano. But he writes here, a trio pour piano, oboe, et basson. So that's the order, and that's very interesting. So let me do one thing straight away, if you don't mind. There we go. Uh, you help me? I want to hear more of the... Yes, it's there. Yes. I think the piano part is so important that I want to hear more of you. <laughs> and so this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is not nice for me to you two, because especially the sound of the bassoon, is my experience, is easily eaten or hidden by the sound of the, of the grand piano. So you must work even harder now. But I think it's worth trying out to invite him to be more of the soloist and more present. Besides uh, being more present, I think also it's always an interesting thing with uh, playing with a piano for, for wind instruments. What do we do with the lid? But because if you put it on the small uh, stand here, the sound is really projected in that direction. So actually, for many parts of the audience, it's louder even. So I think, and I, I'm, I would love to try this out, I hope it works also here, that if we open it, we just have more clarity for everyone. The sound is more present. I know it's probably for you, and you're standing very close, so for your right ear, it's gonna be louder. I'm sorry, you know, already. But we, uh, so there's two reasons I'm doing it. Mostly I like this for the sound of the piano in general, but especially for this piece, it's almost like a piano concerto. And there's also a psychological thing about this, and I'm telling this for you especially, that when people, audience comes to concerts and they see a pianist and there either is a singer or there's a, a, some string players or there's winds, they think the piano is the accompaniment. That's the first reaction. That's the, that's the default uh, uh, attitude of listening. So in order to let the audience know that it's actually a trio for piano, and two wind instruments, you need to give a lot more. Yes? I mean, not all the time, of course, but in general, you can be more like a lion on the piano. I'm inviting you to, to surprise us in that way. Let me give you a few examples. <clears throat> can you play the first bar for the audience, and then in the second bar, don't play this chord, but play the same. So actually repeat the first. Tom, 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 but you go back to the first chord. That's pretty normal, yeah? That's how a piece could start. But look what's, what's in the second bar. That's a lot of drama already. 
and I want to feel much more of the drama. Or I want you to be aware of the possibility of the drama that's in there. And also, it's, it's a very uh, light French, a very uh, a good piece with a lot of variety, a lot of lightness in it. And therefore, I think it's extra nice and uh, uh, interesting to grab the audience. You come on stage, you smile, but then BAM! <laughs> Gotta get you! It's forte, it's accents, and then the chord in the second bar must be what's happening here? So, I always think it's a challenge, uh, especially I told myself also before this uh, uh, masterclass, because I know the piece so well, uh, every note is, I'm expecting every note, you know? So I, I'm working with the expectation of a thing that I already know. But I think it's a challenge to analyze music always in such a way uh, and try to look for the special notes and the second bar must be like a bomb falling in the audience, you know? So you, you, it is a very open chord, you know, not too full, it's very, it starts very open, but already the second bar, wow, what's happening here? Um, so maybe we can, you can support this idea of, yes, it's, uh, see the whole opening as, a, as an introduction, of the presto, which it is, of course, and of course the presto to it's just nice and French and everything is fine. But in order to have this feeling of everything is fine, uh, I mean th that feeling is even stronger if before that the first minute you have really created a completely different world. Can we try that? So also you, you can be more impressive before we go to the lightness of the prestos. Yes. already much better thank you thank you I think we can make one more step um, what's very interesting about Poulenc uh, there's also this famous uh, sextet for piano again and uh, wind uh, quintet is how he writes his dynamics and um, very often in the in the sextet for example uh, in the bassoon th there would be some instruments playing together and the bassoon has a higher notated dynamic than the other instruments. And I think there can only be one reason that uh, when Poulenc was working on the on that music, and also maybe on this music, he always wanted to hear more of the bassoon, and he thought, ah, oh, it's not hard enough. You know, I'll give him a fortissimo instead of a forte. That's happening many times. So your opening is fortissimo, yours is forte, but we want to have the same energy, right? Um, a few minor things to make this more, uh, I think it's, it's good to think of the introduction as a, a strange and exciting and maybe a little bit uh, frightening or impressive, let me say, it should be impressive in a way, uh, opening, uh, introduction. Um, and there are a few things that might help. Um, there's one chord, I mean, I don't want to be rude. It's one chord that you gave, and that's the last chord of the introduction, 
And that had the intensity that I would like to have <laughs> for the whole introduction. I hope you don't mind me saying that. I mean, I can tell from so many details, it's a, it's a very difficult piece, but he's a great uh, player. I can tell that from the first run through. I know it's not fortissimo, it's only forte, but there are accents on every note. So that tells us something. We must have intensity. So I can have more from that. And then it's all, uh, you can talk about uh, if there's a uh, difference in notation. For example, his introduction is dam pa dam. It's uh, with uh, staccato notes. And in the oboe, it's not. Did you talk about that? Did you realize that? He is staccato and he is no staccato. Is that a thing that you have been discussing? He is staccato in the bassoon, and with you there's no staccato, right? Good. In the part, ah, oh, that's wonderful. The part is different from the score. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say, um, you are doing it differently. So, and I'm not saying this is right and this is wrong, or the other way around, but please uh, talk uh, with each other, because you can also hear this and talk about it. So let's, shall we do it dump? Ta -da, or tam ta -ti, which is a very different, uh, you know, intensity. And since I'm only here for a little time, I give a suggestion. You might throw it away later. I would go for the higher intensity. So take the staccato with the not too literally. Give a staccato can be many things. Yeah, it can be as short as possible, but there are many different steps of short notes. So give it some weight. Okay, a few more things to make, and then we do the introduction once more. Um, if, if we go to the bassoon, those, those interruptions, they can really be, you could try to, try to kick him off the chair, you know, sitting, or, you know, you, there must be more of a friction between you happening, I think. Um, and then there's a this very special moment that you both can make more magic because the bassoon goes to the lowest note, the long B flat, you know, you hear that long. And the, c c can you just uh, do the. <laughs> oh, it was better in tune before. But, <laughs> yeah. but here, the audience, you give the audience a little bit time after that to realize, hey, huh? What's that? It's, it's a little joke. Huh? It's a, uh, secretly, the piano is helping you. So we stop it and then, hey, still there. So take a little bit more time before you continue after that. There's a, also Fermat on the rest, yeah? So we have more intensity from the pickups from you. We have uh, like a magic moment with a low B flat. And we have more intensity from you, uh, us commenting on time. Ba -da, ba -ba -da, ba -da. Yes? And why don't you try once again, once more, to play it even a bit louder, and I tell you when it's too much. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm sorry to interrupt. It's really beautiful. I, I'm just curious to hear, how is the opening of the piano? Is it working for you? Anyone? I hear, see your thumb. Is it too much, the piano? No. Thumbs up so far, not too much. Good. Because I think it's good. It gives you the opportunity to step out. It's more clear, uh, I hear more clarity. And, and you're such a great player that you can still step back if needed. I love the opening. That's the energy. Now was uh, some energy, uh, electricity in the house, you know? I loved it. You can do whatever you want later, but I, I loved it. Can I give you a few spots where I think, hey, we, we can have more of the piano? It's between... You have the big numbers, right? Between five and six. Um, uh, so let me count. Bef before six, uh, whoop, whoop, two, four, six, eight, ten bars before th six. Can we have the oboe and the, and the piano together? And you do only you do the, the melody. Okay, once again, to have the ex the, the exactly the same. I always like to take a few things uh, apart, out of the context. You have to really have the same uh, articulation. Yeah, and I think then in the, in the official context, let's do now complete, you really must take out this melody a bit more. And there was one similar. Actually, there's many places in the piece where uh, you have different roles. Huh? You have both a melody and you're accompanying yourself. So if you know, you know what I'm talking about, that can be all, almost always more clear. So don't worry to bring out the melody line. Uh, I think there's in the second movement, there's a clear example of that. But let's start maybe just on fig uh, figure uh, uh, five and that we play everything and, uh, and just take this moment to really be matching the oboe and again there's a psychological thing so in order to be equal for the listener you, you actually must play louder I think because we consider him as a soloist and he's standing more so in in order to really be, well, I don't repeat myself. <laughs> yeah, he wants to start before. Huh? Maybe it's better. Tading, pa 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 di pa pa. Three bars before five. Yeah. Yes.
Yeah, sorry to. Uh, yeah, let's continue now, but I have a suggestion. There's. Different note, but also. I'm, not, I'm sure you know, but there, there's here uh, three beats before the piano comes in, and there's only one beat before you come in. So I want to have some. No, there's a statement. Someone reacts to the statement, and you react, but you re react differently. So I want to. I think it's nice if you clearly speak quicker than you did. So, and you can also help him. This is a little uh, theatrical thought. So, oops, by surprise, you come earlier. And that, that's the kind of thing that uh, is very much a Poulenc likeness, I think. Um, so let's, um, yeah, I'm spoiling the, <laughs> the idea now. I hope the audience, audience didn't hear my suggestion and you're going to surprise them now. Uh, but let's just do that and then uh, continue, yes? Excellent uh, bunch of, uh, yeah, you're an excellent ensemble. There's so much together. Just to, uh, a thought. Uh, when a note has an accent, in many cases, they, it does not mean that the note must be shorter. And many people do this. But I'm sure if tom, 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 tee, hum, if there would have been no accents, you would have been singing much more like in a line, much more singing. And uh, there's a similar uh, passage here. Tom, tee, ta da 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 uh, for, the, for the bassoon, that's uh, four bars before nine. If there's no accents, I think you would sing, uh, play long notes. Uh, ta -tee, ta -da -da. But I think adding an accent should not change the singing quality. It's more like really giving an attack of the tanti. So, and many people, 
is, uh, an accent also looks a little bit like a decrescendo, right? So many people do da di da 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 da. So in that, uh, if you do that, then you're losing the singing quality. But I think you can have both the singing quality and the accent. And I thought of it again here just before the end, you know. Tom 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 da da. If you look at uh, bar uh, figure 18, and for you the third bar. If there's no accents, you would s play broader notes. And I would suggest, I would ask if you can still play very broad notes, but with attack. You know? um, sometimes accents are, are meaning tau, tau, tau. But here I think we need, it's just a, a suggestion to have more intensity. So don't play shorter just because there are accents. Uh, can we just do that? Um, maybe the piano, can you play for us those, two, those few bars at 18? Okay, yeah. uh, even longer notes, da, 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 sostenuto, with accents. I'm not sure that a bassoon can cope with this, but together I want to have this, this quality. Can you join in? Are you also? 18. excited about this. Do we have time for the second movement? No, it's time to round off. I'm very, I'm very pleased to uh, be back in this piece and I thank you so much and I'm inviting the audience to share my excitement about this excellent player. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Good meeting.
Hi, I'm Raf Hekema. I play the saxophone in Halifax Reed Quintet, so I never played this piece, unfortunately, because it's wonderful music. Do you enjoy it as well? I reckon it sounded like you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, we have limited time, as always, but um, I think, uh, do you have a wish to work on one of the movements or uh, is there a specific mo movement? First, yeah, I was thinking the same, but maybe, maybe not for the same reason. We'll find out. Um, I was thinking about the first movement that um, it's super complex music, right? There's a lot of material, a lot of um, themes and motives, um, and it's a lot like a, a theatrical play, actually. Always things going on. One is saying something and the others comment, blah, 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 like that. So, and we wanna, we wanna experience all of that. So we want to hear you in the beginning to present the, the melody, but then we wanna hear that. And at the same time, the entrance of the, of the, of the horn, well, that's actually quite simple up to there. But then later it becomes much more complex than the uh, flute and oboe get together, but at the same time, the clarinet introduces something new. We want to hear that. So that brings me to the thought, because you are actually playing this piece rather allegro, right? Uh, can, you, can you present the, the, the opening melody? So to, to me that sounds like a proper allegro, uh, where it says allegro ben moderato. And I was wondering, because the character of this melody actually asks for this speed, I think this is a good speed for the melody. But then for the rest of the piece, it becomes really hectic with this speed. So what I was wondering is that maybe if we p uh, pull the speed down just a fraction, and then uh, perhaps we, we can find a, a little opening to play a little freer, but that's a, a, a big responsibility because you need to know what the other one plays, right? If there's a, something happening just before your entrance or before you uh, end a slur, for example, you need to know what's going on. So that's a big responsibility for all of you to, to stay together. Even if we st we'll start playing more free and thus providing more character to each of the themes and motives, but then the theatrical thing going on between you will, be, will have much more face, much more character, I think. So would you be open to experiment with that? All right, all right. So give us the, may, maybe, uh, well, not necessarily slower, but a, a little more open to what's gonna happen. So maybe a fraction slower, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Can we hear that separate? The high winds? Da 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 da. Again? Okay, maybe with the one of the horn? Okay, so, so that's together, and then you alone, same, and then you, you join. Again, again, we want to have this really clear. Again, again, just not together. Okay, but, but now you are a little bit vague here, to my perception. I think that you can come forward from that bar on. Yeah, so that is clear, but then you're on. Same? Oh, 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 too much is happening now here. 
So I, I want everyone, everyone to step up as soon as you have something that you think is important, even if you think it, if, even if it's wrong, just make it important, because we want to hear, we want we want them to hear the score, yeah. So make this like real theater. Uh, is this slower than you're used to, or? No, I'm not asking if it's fine. Is it slower than you're used to? Yeah, it's a bit slower. Okay, good, 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 good. So same place. <laughs> I see what's happening. So we have sort of a melody here, but at the same time we have something very delicate going on over there, and you're intervening. Yeah? So can you play your solo and then they'll, they'll respond? I think what would be good maybe is that you turn it down a bit, because I think it's only a transitional thing. It's not a real melody. And then we have a focus on the flute, but at the same time, so it's Important also, but less important. Your solo. Okay. More, I think. Same. So this is a point where I have the feeling there's so much going on, it's just too fast. What do you think of that? Or you should play more clear, more like a play, like that. We could try the, the last first, and then if that, <laughs> if that doesn't solve the problem, then we'll go slower, perhaps. Same thing? Mm, bravo. Okay, again. More. Okay. Now you have an important thing. Maybe you're keeping that down because you want to hear the flute there, right? I don't know why it's why it says pianissimo. Do you have the answer? <laughs> why is it pianissimo and she has forte? Again? Oh, okay. No, no. I'm, I'm asking why the composer wrote pianissimo and forte for her. You, you never wondered. Okay. <laughs> I, so there's another thing I was, uh, uh, I was wondering. When you uh, uh, come together to uh, to practice, do you expect everyone to know the score? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to what extent do you study the score? What do you do as a preparation to your rehearsal? Do you look into it and with with the music maybe, or with your own part compare? Okay. So uh, that would, if I would play your part, then this would spring, uh, uh, come on to me like, oh, wow. She has poco forte, and I have sempre pianissimo. But you did a great job, so not about that. Uh, okay, so it's an accompanying part. It's, I was wrong, I think. I think I was wrong. Anyway, let's, um, let's then focus on the flute, which has a, that brilliant part there. One more? Once more, your... <coughs> Okay. 
Okay. So now that I know what's happening, I want more of you. Yeah? Uh, well, same place, and then we'll move on. So here, finally, some clarity, some restfulness. I think you can um, build up your, the intensity of your solo more, so that, that it has a longer curve and more forte, and invite them to play more forte there. Can you play your, from your melody? Your, um, and, and that small, that's a joke, because it's offbeat. So it's, play it funny, as funny as you can. Uh, yeah, you're upbeat then. Pirodum. Oh, you know where? There are no bar numbers here. So. Yeah, a tempo. It, it, it's a, the score is different from your parts. Okay. So, so, so yeah, sorry. Everyone, so don't forget to make the joke, right? So it, it must you must compete with her. Oh. Sorry, can, can you play more? I don't want like really big Wagner opera. Um, I didn't get the joke quite. Yet. Nice um, big curve, yeah? loved it. Um, so now we have a, a situation where when you uh, bring in new material, you have to be very specific. If I say the, if I, if I um, tell you where I'll be going next, which is to Vancouver, did you get that, where I'm going? Where I'm going? Vancouver, yes. I, so if, I'm, I, if I want to tell you I'm going to Vancouver, I have to be very precise with my pronunciation. Yeah? So that's the same. When you introduce that, new, when you introduce that melody, that was really clear, but then the next one, you have even more complex material. So you have to be very specific with the pronunciation of that material. And then maybe a little bit of freedom could help in order to get the audience to know where you're going next to Vancouver. Yeah? So your entrance, your, your thing, do you all know where that is? After the horn solo. Yes. So you're getting my point. That was brilliant. But now everything is jumbled up. Too much. It's just so much. So I need even more clarity here. Yeah. Uh, so the way she played 
Actually, that is the, the style that we need here. A lot of clarity in, in the themes and motives. And if you need to take a little bit more time for that, be my guest. So, oh, where can we start <laughs> with our bar numbers? <laughs> uh, we, 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 we started, yeah, we started on, on a good place. Do we all know, not know now where that is? Yeah. Good. Okay. I think everyone got the point now. Can we extend this, this a little bit by playing even more pronounced? Lots of jokes in this, all right? Uh, you, uh, da, 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 da. She, you copy her melody, but in a different way. inviting them to step up again so you can give more oh. now it's less yeah Okay, but it's nowhere in the score to diminish. It's all forte, 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 throughout. Same thing with even more presence. I love that. Beautiful. Same? you play that melody much freer and they need to save themselves yeah they they should know where you are all right i'm sorry Was your experience much freer? Could be much freer. You're making it much too easy for them. <laughs> Same thing? I 
desire it to be slightly slower. How would that be for you? To play it slightly slower? And then maybe that invites you to play freer? Because it's not so free right now. You could take more space and thus make the character um, more contrasting to the previous material. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, put it in. Yeah. So, a bit slower, a bit slower. <laughs> at some point and they couldn't follow. I love this, this speed, because it, it puts much more light on you. And it's such a beautiful solo. Do you feel comfortable doing it a, a tiny bit slower? You can pick it up later, the speed. Yeah? Once more and then we'll continue. And maybe, uh, well, it says mezzo piano and then mezzo piano espressivo in the horn. I think that maybe mezzo piano does not describe the, the character that it could have. Maybe a sort of a almost hazy. Bravo! Thanks so much. Thank you, Califax, and thank you, Nielsen Quintet. The last piece we will hear today is Samuel Barber's Summer Music for Wind Quintet. This will be performed by flautist Xia En, oboist Yong Xuan, clarinetist Yen Rang, bassoonist Zhu Xuan, and Chloe on the French horn.
bravo, this is so well played. Wow. I'm Jelte, I'm the bass clarinet player of Calafax. Um, yeah. I was listening and I was thinking, how do you study a piece like this? How do you do that? Uh, obviously, the first time you did it, you couldn't run through everything. No, but no, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> so, but welcome to the session. Yes. So, you divide it in, into sections, and okay. And did you know the piece before you went to study it together, or did you listen to recordings? Yes. Um, yeah, we did. Okay. And did you have a score? Three scores. Like this? Yeah. 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 And before the first rehearsal, did you use the score? Yes. Yes, we always have it in practice. Ah, very good. Yeah. So. Before the first rehearsal, you don't only uh, practice your parts, but also study the score. For? For what? To understand each other. Yes. And that's the beautiful thing about playing chamber music, is that you don't only know your own part, but you are interested in the other parts as well. So that's really making a chamber music. You do this very well. You probably know, but the audience maybe not, is that this piece is written for five solo wind players, the players for the uh, Detroit Symphony Orchestra. And I imagine that they are sitting in the orchestra day by day, having a conductor telling them, no, softer, no, uh, slower, not too loud, not too loud. And I saw in this score, as a clarinet player, you must have seen this. It's so funny. It says, freely with arrogance. And I think the, the, the clarinet player of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra must, la must have laughed very loudly. Because to play with arrogance, it's play as very soloistic. And that's what you can do in this piece. So it's not only uh, playing chamber music and being very interested in each other's parts, but also play as a soloist. And a soloist normally uh, is standing up. <laughs> Would it be possible? Is it possible for a bassoon French horn to play standing up? Yes? <laughs> yes? Wow, wow, bravo. Yes. Yes? Because uh, being an audience, we like concerts not only uh, for, for the ear, but also for the eye. Because we can listen to recordings at home too. But when we go to concerts, we want to see the musicians and we want to hear the music and we want to see the music. And that, that is what I'm interested in. Because I know you know the piece, you can play your part. Uh, but maybe you can show to each other and also to the audience what the music is all about. And that works a bit better when you're standing up. It's also a bit more informal. Because this music is for uh, arrogant and free players. That's, that's what's in the score. It's not my line, it's Barber's line. Okay. Okay. And I consider there are, of course, solos, uh, melodies. Is it? Yes, it's possible? Yeah. Melodies. But every note is important. Every part is important. When you have pianissimo, and your colleague has fortissimo, it doesn't mean that you are not important. Yeah, as a bass clarinet player, I know, because I don't have many solos. <laughs> so I consider my complete part as a solo part. 
until they say, please play a bit softer. <laughs> okay, shall we? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, on our instrument we have this small uh, thing. Uh, and it's not very expensive, but it's so important. And something happened to the reed, so we, we, we change it. Uh, maybe it's a good op opportunity to tell that tomorrow also for the people listening at home. Tomorrow we have a concert here in this building. And I tell this because we also play a piece by Samuel Barber. And I really love this composer because he is an American composer and he knows how to write uh, American music. You can tell it's American music, but it's much more than just American music. It's, it's funny. It's very clever, and I was studying this piece before this lesson, and we will come to this uh, a bit later, when there is a beautiful melody in the, ah, uh, uh, maybe in, or in, in the oboe, and she's not here, but uh, maybe you know what I mean, huh? This, this, da da di da. Do you have that as well? Yeah. Do you have that melody? Da -da -di -da. Who has this beautiful melody in figure two? Oh, only, only oboe? Okay. Well, we listen to this beautiful melody in the oboe with a, with a new reed. But not only the melody is very special, but the, the, the other players, they have very interesting material. And when you hear that, it sounds like rubato. He could have written a simple accompaniment, but he didn't. He made very special rhythms. Actually, we can do that. Let us play. Um, oh, yes. And, and the French horn is introducing. Uh, yeah. So let's start in uh, figure two without, without oboe. So we got we are going to play figure two without you. Okay. <laughs> oh, relax. Yes. So, thank you. I think this is so beautiful. I feel it on my skin. But it's only da da di da da da. And we think the horn has the solo. But that's the secret of this beautiful music. The solo is in the oboe. Um, how are you? <laughs> and how's the reed? <coughs> Want to try? Okay, what's a good place to start? Maybe three bars before two? Yeah? Yes. So we have this beautiful melody, and Barber um, 
starts this melody sometimes on a strange moment. And as a listener, you think, okay, huh? Oh, okay. It sounds simple, but there is something else going on. Okay, so this was just uh, giving you time to get a new read. Can we start from the beginning? And um, maybe a general remark. I'm sure you talked about this, but uh, articulation, uh, the dots and the lines, and uh, it could be more clear so that we, as being in the audience, understand the music better as if it is uh, spoken words. So this is a bit like my muffled, so very articulate. Okay, very beautiful. Can I hear only ho uh, horn and bassoon? Um, so, here, it's normal notes, ta ta, and uh, legato, and ta ta ta. So, these notes are a bit more important. And when you play this, yes, we know there's a flute, yes, we know that, but we are very important. Yeah? Okay. Don't hide yourself. So without flute and without clarinet. to arrogant uh, Detroit solo players from the orchestra. Uh, it could be a bit, a bit more. Ta ta, ta 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 ha ti ta ta ti ha. And the difference between a triplet and normal eighth. Ta ta ti ta. Okay, <coughs> there's a choice to make in uh, four bars before two, whether you make the diminuendo much softer than the bassoon, or you don't make too much diminuendo so that he can enter in your dynamics. Have you talked about that? Maybe you discuss right now, and I'll talk to the horn player. Here, you start asking for attention. Ta -da, ti -da, ta -da. And so you're introducing this. So, as if you're saying to the audience, I'm the solo player, I'm the solo player. And the audience is listening. So they say, okay, she's preparing to play the solo. And then suddenly, the solo is lifted over. Okay, um, let's hear what you have decided. Mm -hmm. 
w uh, in general, you mean? In general, in the beginning. No, in the beginning, yeah. Well, they have both. They have a uh, uh, piano, yeah. but they have at different moments. They have this hairpins, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the crescendo yeah. and the diminuendo. For, what, what, uh, I think you asked this question with a reason. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm hearing less of the horn than of the bassoon in general. And it's very nice if it's coming out and going back. But in yes. general, it sounds like a bassoon solo with horn on the background. Or is it my ears only? Well, <laughs> it might have something to do with the horn playing backwards. Yeah, so you have to... No, no, but you have to be aware of it. Yeah. Because when I'm standing there, I don't have that uh, experience. Yeah. But... It's interesting that you mention that because when we are standing up and we are preparing to play a solo, we could easily make ourselves a bit bigger and play a bit like this. And when we are sitting, we play like this. But when we are standing up, we, we can address to the audience our solo. I, I'm telling you this, especially to you, because here, I miss a bit the arrogance of the <laughs> Detroit clarinet player in 1953. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it could help to make yourself a bit bigger yeah. and address to the audience. Not too much, just a little. Yeah. Okay, well. Uh, yes. Let's start at figure one. a beautiful moment. It, the, 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 the beautiful moment is just before the entrance of the oboe. So we want that moment just before the entrance of the oboe as long as possible. I think it's nice what you're doing. But uh, uh, the diminuendo on the long note, not too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I liked it when you opened up a bit. Yeah. Uh, but likes it too. <laughs> um, let's do three bars before two. Why do you have these uh, small notes? No, why do you have these notes? Why? Because the bass is bigger. So one, two, three, four, five. Five bars before four. Can you play your part? It's so beautiful. Yeah, 
So you have this small note, so you start very low, and then you go up, and then you go low. Big intervals, big, why? Who knows? Who in the ensemble knows? Yeah, I was wondering why did Barber make your part the way he did? We know he's clever. Do you know? Can you play again? You're a soloist, huh? Sorry? Yes. But I think it's more than that. I think, as a bassoon player, you want to tell the audience, don't forget me, I'm here. Yeah. So the, 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 the fast notes, you could play them a bit slower, like an opera singer. Um, I think this passage could be even more interesting when you play the dynamics more precisely. So when it's piano, really go back and um, be a bit more precise in explanation. So when you have ta da di da di da, but in a bigger hole like this, you could do. And also this uh, gesture of it's, it's longing, could be a bit better. And, and now we're talking about articulation. We, do, we, we are not going to do it again, but uh, yes, we are going to do it again. Um, three bars before two, fl uh, flute and clarinet. Ta 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 pa 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 ti ha ti ha. Could you do that as an example? Show us as an example about how precise you can articulate that. Yeah. Yes. So, one, two, three. Three notes and then a different note. Is that correct? Yeah. I would like to hear that more, more clearly. Yeah, like tum tum ta di da, tum tum ta, tum tum ta. Consider you are playing in a big hall. Yeah, I think this is the minimum. Yeah, because also the horn is is. Uh, 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 yeah, asking for attention. She says, I'm going to play the solo, I'm going to play the solo, but then the oboe is going to play the solo. Yeah, so let's start uh, three bars before two. Articulation, dynamics, and bassoon. <laughs>
very good. Can you play uh, five and then only two notes? Pop, pop. Yeah. <laughs> Once more. Okay. Um, was this loud? Was this soft or in between? Mezzo piano. Oui. Then we should do better. Okay. Once more. Okay. Mm. <laughs> We're happy. So, this is why I was asking you to really play piano and pianissimo. Because we are enjoying this beautiful pianissimo. Ta-da! We're dreaming away. And there's... <laughs> Shall we try that? So, figure four. What is this music about, this passage? I'm coming. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. And who's playing on the grass? Yes. Many? Four. <laughs> One's doing nothing. Oh, I know. I know who that is. Um, so we have this longing. Ta -da, ta -da. And suddenly. And how does this start? It starts like. Yeah, already. Yes. Yes. Ta -ta. Or what's the what's the best way of starting this? I like that idea. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah. A and <laughs> I, 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 this is very stupid, this, but um, you are not playing, and I saw you really relaxing. I have a pause. Yeah, do nothing. Intermission. <laughs> but what are you telling to the audience when you when you are standing like that? You, 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 you left the music. Yeah. That's what I was... I, I know you don't have notes, but you're still in the piece, you're in the music. So be aware of what you're saying to the audience when you say... <laughs> okay. Same place. Yes, okay. Very good. Um, we are now standing up for the first time, so the rhythm is a bit less precise than you are used to, but you will uh, work that out. The first forte was very nice, but when you have the second forte, 
don't forget to do something extra because the audience is already used to you playing forte, so you have to give them something extra. And the third time, give something extra again. And then, uh, Barber adds new material. And later, that material becomes more important. But when you have it for the first time, uh, bring it out. This is the sort. And the texture is and you have this like you're announcing something new, uh, but it's not, not there yet. Okay, so we start at the forte now. Every time you have this forte, give something extra. Yeah? And be very disciplined in very disciplined in rhythm and dynamics. Ah, uh, sorry. I know it's late, <laughs> um, but I think you could add some aggression. I know we're on the playground, but we are doing this nasty game. Uh, um, it can hurt a little. And there's something else I would like to talk about. I, I have a question. Uh, wind players? Uh, Reeds, no reeds, flute, horn. Uh, we all have sixteenth and dots. How do you do that when you all have ta 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 ta? Have you talked about that? Yes. How? Okay, and and how do you agree on those things? Okay. This is uh, a process of how you work. You have the same material, but you have different instruments. Um, and and some instruments are very big. The horn is very long. You don't see it, but it's <laughs> very long. Uh, and yet, yeah. How do you agree on sixteenth being short? Do you know? Yeah. That's very good. Jelte, can you say it again? He has a microphone. What did you say? Yeah. So they talk about who has the melody, who has the main voice. And the person who has the main voice is being asked, how do you play this? And the rest will try to imitate, to copy. Um, as an example, could you play five in the oboe? Yes. Okay. Could you play five? Thank <laughs> you. 
It's nice, huh? Could you play five? Yes. Could you play five? Yes, and this is what I am. Uh, I think this is so fascinating about playing chamber music. Uh, the same material, but very different instruments. And there's no conductor. Whew. So we can decide for ourselves. We can help each other. And uh, we can help each other by uh, talking. Is it difficult? Uh, Can you help me on this? Um, can I play a bit louder? Okay, so you can decide how to make one sound. And you probably did already, but that this is a, a, an ongoing process of learning how, not only how your own instrument works, but also how the instrument works of your colleagues, and adapt to that so that you get one sound if you want one sound and get very different sound, if that is needed. Okay, I was wondering, how are we in time? I can, I can work until 12. <laughs> uh, we're out of time. Oh. Well, we did uh, 20 bars, which is very good. No, you, you played very good, thank you, thank you. So th this is probably the moment to, uh, to end this uh, evening for us uh, as Califax. Uh, we would like to thank the organization for, for having us here and doing this uh, beautiful session with so many talented students. Um, I hope to see you all at the concert tomorrow. And thank you for listening or being here. We have come to the end of our masterclass. A tremendous thank you to Califax for being here with us today to share all your expertise and musical insight with us. Thank you also to all our students who played this evening. And of course, thank you, our audience, for joining us this evening. We hope that you've enjoyed your time with us today, ladies and gentlemen. Do join us again as our masterclass series runs throughout the semester. You can view the conservatory's online performance season on our YouTube channel. And for information about our upcoming events and other happenings at YST, do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, thank you and have a good evening.